Do you shout across the room at Siri or Alexa, the virtual assistants who will search the internet for you, tell you the time, check the weather? Well, are you sure that those disembodied female voices are your virtual slaves? They serve you, don't they? Not the other way around? Well, in a confronting new book called Techno Feudalism, former economics professor and one time Greek finance minister Yanis Varoufakis argues that in fact we are the slaves. He reckons we tell these electronic helpers so much about ourselves, they start manipulating our preferences, showing us ads for glossy new shoes and watches and furniture, and then nudging us to just click to buy. The drums' Michael Forno explains it's not just us hapless digital slaves who are being manipulated by cloud capital, it's taking down the traditional capitalists too. The free market, a place to facilitate the exchange of goods and services. But more than just a means of enabling transactions, Hurry to Crazy John for the best Telstra deal! The market-based economy allows consumers' desires to be fulfilled Get ready for a real treat. and influenced. Spin it with all your friends! That's why sellers advertise. Check this out! Advertising is based on one thing. Happiness. The Hawaii chair. But that could already be history. <laughs> Greek economist Yanis Varoufakis argues our preferences are now shaped not by markets, but by machine networks he calls cloud capital. Think Amazon's Alexa or Apple's Siri. North. Read me the message. Is it going to be chilly in San Francisco this weekend? While it seems like these virtual assistants are there for our convenience... Text my wife, I'm going to be 30 minutes late. It might be that the very opposite is true, with the technology training our desires without us even knowing it. The instant we have a desire for something, the ads start popping up, bypassing any physical marketplace or shop. Worse yet, Varoufakis argues, the very marketplace itself is owned and operated by big tech firms and a new class of feudal overlords. Their profits coming not from actually producing things like clothing or white goods, but skimming off those who do, with the cloud-based services carving out as much as 40% of each transaction. Far from being capitalism, Varoufakis argues we've entered a new age of techno-feudalism. It even comes with a matching fork to make carving a pleasure. And I'm pleased to say that Yanis Varoufakis joins us now from Athens. Lovely to speak with you again. Very good to see you, Helen. Now, take me through this. What is the difference between the ad on television or the big billboard on the side of the motorway that tells me I want something and suddenly I realise that I do. I do want the new car. I do want the new thing. What is the difference between that and something popping up in my Facebook feed saying, look at this lovely watch. You want it, don't you? Indeed, uh, Don Draper or the billboards that you've just mentioned uh, is a one-way street or was a one-way street. Don Draper had a great idea on how to convince you to eat uh, a burger that you didn't really need or the billboard could uh, implant in your heart the desire for a Mercedes-Benz, right? But that was one way, from the billboard or Don Draper to you. End of story. And then if the ad was successful, you would have physically to go to a Mercedes-Benz dealer or to a burger joint and actually buy the stuff from the actual maker or seller of that commodity. Today, what happens here is this. Firstly, uh, when you enter Amazon.com, you are interacting with an algorithm. You are training the algorithm, whether it's Alexa or the actual website. You are training it to know what you want. So you are training it to train you, to train it, to train you, to train it, to give you good advice I don't know about you, but when Amazon suggests books to me, they're usually books I want to read, similarly with Spotify or Netflix. They know me pretty well because of this uh, you know, dual process of feedback between me, you, and the machine, right? And it's a machine, it's automated. That's one dimension which is very different. The second dimension, which is mind-bogglingly significant, is that once you want something as a result of this infinite regress interaction with the machine, the machine sells it to you directly. You don't have to go to the Mercedes-Benz or to the burger joint uh, outlet to buy it. You just click on a button and Amazon ships it to you. So in other words, Amazon has replaced the market. Some people think of Amazon as a big marketplace because there are lots of sellers and lots of buyers, but it's not. 
There are a lot of sellers and buyers, but it's the algorithm that matches them in a way that has nothing to do with any, any notion of the market as we know it. So one thing is automated behavior of modification and two-way, unlike Don Draper and the Billboard. And the second thing is bypassing the market. That's not capitalism anymore. Welcome to what I call techno feudalism. Okay, so t t I understand what you're saying because um, uh, uh, typically, uh, as a middle-aged woman, I will like uh, Manchester sheets. This is predictable, apparently. Uh, upholstery, I will, I'll be fascinated with upholstery and um, some and soft furnishings generally. I'll be a bit of a sucker for soft, soft furnishings. So, so this is known about me and when I start Googling these things or looking for these things, sure enough, I am followed around and eventually I will be tempted by some glorious pattern into, into clicking the button. So, so I understand that. But, but what is the difference between Amazon... Uh, and Frank Lowy, who's run Westfield, right? Um, the, 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 the drapery company has to exist in, in Westfield. That doesn't make them um, serfs to Mr Lowy. That doesn't make him a feudal overlord. How have we got back to feudalism? Well, increasingly we see that um, companies that survive are the ones that themselves turn into Amazon-like companies. Look at Walmart. Walmart was a bricks and mortar supermarket, hypermarket. The only way Walmart managed to survive the Amazon onslaught was to develop its own cloud fiefdom, as I call it, with increasingly uh, a process of deriving its profits or rents out of that. Uh, and you know what, Ellen, what, what is fascinating is you, you, you mentioned your uh, uh, predilection for Manchester, for soft uh, furnishings and so on. Well, you see, the, the, the algorithm knows a lot more about you than that. It knows when you think about Manchester, when was it the last time that you actually purchased it? Where were you when you thought of this or when you were about to purchase it? So to give you an example, if you and a friend of yours who also has a predilection for Manchester, if you're sitting next to one another on your phones and you type into the Amazon algorithm or any algorithm, Google, for instance, um, Manchester, you and your friend are going to see different things. The algorithm will match you to different suppliers. So the suppliers are absolutely dependent on the algorithm in order to make ends meet, in order to maintain their capacity to, be, to remain in, in, in business. And that makes those brick and mortar companies increasingly dependent vassals of the owners of those algorithms. OK, so just, we, and we should get to our panel because you're going to love them. Just as the feudal lord would say, uh, you serfs uh, bring in the wheat and give me 40% of whatever you get, even though the feudal lord sat there and did nothing, the techno-feudal lords sit there and say, I match you up, you give me 40%, and, and that's where you get the, uh, the feudalism from, correct? Uh, it is correct. It is correct that, that, you know, I'm Jeff Bezos. He's a very smart entrepreneur. He's a capitalist. He has... Uh, invested a lot of money, mind you, 90% of it comes from central bank money that was printed after 2008, but let's, let's set this aside for a moment. Uh, he's a capitalist, but he used a new kind of capital. Cloud capital is not like industrial robots. It's not like telephone systems. It's not like, you know, um, uh, electricity grids. It is there not to produce other stuff, but it is there to modify your behavior. It's a new form of capital. It's a produced means of behavioral modification. And that investment of Bezos in this kind of produced means of behavioral mod modification gives him the capacity to extract hundreds of billions from capitalists who are actually producing the stuff. And, you know, this book is not just a philosophical theoretical attempt by me to say something new about the world we live in. It's an attempt to understand why is it that our crisis is so permanent, so deep, and why central bankers and governments and finance ministers are finding it absolutely impossible to make to, to, to make sense of the economy that they are having to manage on our behalf. Mm -hmm. um, Emma, do you accept that, that, that not only are we, as we possibly have suspected, mm -hmm. uh, the slaves to what we thought of as the digital slaves, but, but actually that, that we've sort of killed capitalism somehow with this? 
Um, I think it's a fascinating thesis, and I've only just started reading your book, um, Yanis, but uh, so far it's extremely gripping. I've read a few excerpts from it. Um, what it is, what the interesting thing to me, it goes back to what we were talking about at the top of the show about monetary policy and the capacity of central banks now to grapple with the economy as it is actually behaving. Because a lot of the theories that we apply to managing inflation, etc., aren't as readily effective uh, in what we're seeing these new forms of capitalism or new forms of techno-feudalism, wealth extraction occurring. So when you have these large multinational companies who, as, as Yanis says, their business model is to extract value from the creations of others. They don't build anything themselves other than the platform by which we interact. Um, then they're effectively operating over the top of our existing capitalist structure. It's a bit like we used to talk about over the top in terms of broadcasting, um, you know, ho direct um, consumption of, of television, which came over the top of traditional broadcasting. We're seeing the consumption of goods being removed from the producer-consumer relationship by this sort of techno-feudal overlord. And I think, um, as Yanis alluded to there, a lot of this was built on the backs of effectively free money, central bank money that was pumped into the global economy after 2008. It wasn't real money in a way. It was created, it was printed money, and it's allowed them to accrue a huge amount of power over the top of our regulated capitalist system. We're not keeping up in terms of the necessary regulation of this, which is, is fundamentally by its nature cross-border. Um, and it is driving consumption patterns uh, that are very difficult for central banks to grapple with, because as we saw when we were talking about interest rate rises, unemployment remains low, inflation remains high, yet mm. consumers are still consuming. This, this is doesn't not how fit the models no, we had, this and is this is a big part of the reason. The economy is meant to behave in a capitalist yep. system. Let, yep. me, let me go to you, Caitlin, because presumably, um, you know, you grew up in a digital age. Do you accept mm -hmm. that when you talk to this machine, it's not your digital assistant, you're actually, your time's being stolen from it to train it? I definitely think so. Yes, I grew up in the digital age. It's kind of scary that you know, sometimes I'm having a conversation. I do have a Google Assistant in my room. You do? I like, I do, do have it. What do you say to it? Oh, generally I just say like, hey Google, can you play this Taylor Swift song? Like that's a lot of the times that's what I use it for. Um, my dad uses it for other reasons. But what I found is scary is that when I'm having a conversation to a friend or a colleague or something, or I mention a specific product, all of a sudden on Google ads, on Instagram, on Facebook, I'm getting targeted ads from it. And the fact that the thought that I am, it's not my assistant, but I'm actually it. The fact that my data is being taken to then prop up, as you said, like a, a feudal overlord, which I kind of see as like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk is kind of like kings. They have a divine right of kings to control the world. Like literally they influence government policy, they're unregulated. And the fact that I'm just doing my day to day activities and it's there listening all the time, trying to influence my behavior, trying to influence other young people's behaviors is very, very scary. Hmm. But Pete, um, you can just turn it off, eh? Yeah, well, Caitlin, you can turn off the uh, microphone I have, but but e even even so, it'll it'll still uh, you know track your search terms and and so on. I, am I right here? Is is this what we're talking about? And I think it is that we have a new set of victims. We're used to thinking of uh, consumers needing protection. We now have this this sort of layer in between producers and consumers, and the producers are getting ripped off too. So. If you are making something, you have to really be on the Amazon marketplace. Or if you're making music, you have to be on Spotify or mm. books. You, you know, you have to be on Kindle or whatever, um, because that's where the users are. And because of that, these middle people can extract money from producers as well as consumers. Mm. And we've never really had middle people having so much power before. Is that? And I haven't read your book, but. It, is that, is that what you're saying, that we have... Think okay, of it as a parasite. Let's, let's ask Yanis. It's a, it's a parasite between buyer and seller um, that enslaves both. Is that it? It is indeed the case. It was, you know, the, the analogy with feudalism is that uh, under feudalism, you had uh, artisans, you had producers, you had manufacturers, but they were vassals to the, uh, to the lord. The lord charged them a ground rent 
and Bezos charges producers who are selling stuff through Amazon what I call a cloud rent, which is very large. It is not just that it is um, interesting philosophically, it is macroeconomically significant because uh, think about it. The more billions these feudal lords, techno feudal lords, extract from the circular flow of income, the less money there is in the economy to invest in the actual products that are being sold through them. This is why central banks that have been wanting now for two or three years to wind down the money printing that they started after 2008, 2009 in the aftermath of the GFC, the great financial crisis, they cannot do it. Because with all these billions being sucked out of the secular flow of income, it is now absolutely uh, on the shoulders of central banks to keep aggregate demand going at the time of inflation. This is why this, I, the rise of cloud capital, uh, which is on, on the one hand, uh, I, I think it, it is a very controversial hypothesis, but I think it's killing capitalism. Because capitalism, what is capitalism? It's all about a system predicated on profit, and markets. Well, markets are being replaced by these cloud thieves, and profits are being replaced by rents and central bank money. And my great concern is that we are on a cusp of a new era. Like, imagine if this was the 1780s, 1790s, 1800s. You know, people, some smart people like Adam Smith understood that there was a great transformation in play from feudalism to capitalism. I think that we are mm. at that cusp now between capitalism and something far worse, which um, is running away with us and nobody knows how to control it. OK, Pete, you've got a big uh, economics brain. Do you, do you accept that or do you think that we have the capacity to resist? I'm, I want to know what comes... I want to know what the solution is. Yeah. OK, well, let me, let me just get David's take on this, because, David, you have made a study of these individuals, of billionaire philanthropists, right? Because it, it tends to go a bit together, doesn't it? It does indeed. Um, the curious thing about these people is that you often find the term libertarian associated with the tech entrepreneurs, your Bezoses, your Musks, uh, but they're not libertarians. They're very much authoritarians. Uh, they're not interested in freedom for everyone. They're interested in freedom for themselves from government regulation, mm. which is why it's a mistake to call them middlemen. They're not middlemen. It's like Yana says, they're overlords. They want to be free of any constraint the way that feudal overlords were in the past, you know, with the divine right of kings. They want to rule arbitrarily because they view themselves as geniuses. And we are all buying into it. One click at a time, we're affirming their power. We're saying, yes, we want to give you arbitrary power. We want you to give the power to shape our desires. We want you to have the power to shape the fundamental terms of social cooperation through Amazon marketplaces and eBay. All of these things are shaping the way we interact with each other, and there's no accountability. And power is slowly centralizing in the hands of a few people. And if you're interested in individual liberty, like I am, like most people are, this is a bad thing. This is crushing the bases of democratic society because mm. we are creating a hyper-concentrated source of economic power that can't be checked by the state because it's transnational. It is fascinating and is extraordinarily alarming. So, uh, Yanis, dare I say, how do we resist? Is it a simple matter of getting rid of the smartphone, getting yourself one of those flip phones that I threatened to get the children, uh, <laughs> which has no internet connectivity from it, and... Um... Uh, tune out and drop out. Cloud capital cannot be uninvented, uh, thankfully, because it can be put to tremendous use, just like artificial intelligence. You, know, you have, as we speak, artificial in intelligence programs uh, designing antibiotics that are saving people's lives. We are not interested, we shouldn't be interested in going in rolling time back. But what we need is social control over the algorithm. The question is not what do they know about us. The question is, who owns them? And how can organized democratic society take control of, control of the algorithms uh, in the interest of the many? Hmm. And you think that's doable? Oh, of course. All political problems have political solutions. The difficulty is getting organized and converting what is in our collective interest into collective action. That has always been the problem of politics since the beginning of democracy. Hmm. Spoken like a true Marxist. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yanis Varoufakis is an author and the former Greek Minister of Finance.